Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I'm one of the authors of Technid. I welcome you to the Kubernetes Complete Studies and Playlist. We will be learning a lot of things so it's better we'll just get started. So why Kubernetes? If you're familiar with Docker, Podman or some other container runtime, you will understand that this container runtime can actually be used to create and run containers. In other words, this container runtime can be used to run containerized applications, which is fine. However, when it comes to automation, orchestration or management of these containerized applications, especially in their hundreds and thousands, it is never easy and most times not even possible to use these tools. And even especially now that every applications like core banking applications are now being containerized. Hence, the need for an orchestration, automation, and extremely high availability tool that can manage, that can manage rather hundreds and thousands of containerized applications. And one of the two is what we're about to learn now, which is Kubernetes. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a container orchestration platform that manages containerized applications. It also does automation of software deployment and can be used to easily scale up an application environment as required. It was originally developed by Google and now acquired and owned by CNCF, meaning Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and CNCF is owned by the Linux Foundation. To proceed in our studies, especially before we can understand the Kubernetes architecture, we need to understand some of the basic Kubernetes terminologies, in other words, Kubernetes components or objects or features. Let's talk about this Kubernetes object. The first Kubernetes object or component to talk about is the node. Nodes are just servers. It can either be a physical server, that is, bare metal or a virtual server. The second object to talk about is the pod. The pod component is the smallest execution unit in Kubernetes, unlike Docker or Podman where the smallest unit is the container. So, pod is an abstraction over a container, and it could be an abstraction of containers such as Docker, the CRIO, the container D, and the reason why pod is adopted in Kubernetes or is the smallest execution unit is because at any time you choose to change a container runtime, for example, from Docker to CRIO or container D, you won't have issues doing that because the pod is just an abstraction over the container and pod is where the applications will be running. So your container applications will be running inside a pod and you should also know that you can have more than one container image in a pod you can have two container images three container images in the pod but usually it's always one pod one container image but in some cases depending on your deployment you may choose to have more than one container running in a pod. The other Kubernetes object to talk about is the services. You see, because pods are ephemeral by nature, meaning that a pod can die at any time. And when it dies, of course, it dies with its IP addresses. And when the pod is being rescheduled and being recreated automatically by Kubernetes, the pod loses its static IP. Hence, other components or applications that are meant to talk to the pod will find will not find the IP addresses and will not be able to talk to the pod because the pod would have lost its IP addresses. And so to avoid this problem, Kubernetes uses services. The static IP address or addresses are assigned to a service instead of a pod and the service sends the request to the pod. So the service 
also act as a load balancer by load balancing request and sending into the appropriate pod depending on the request and the service can also send requests to ports that are less busy. So there are two types of services. We have the internal service and the external service. So the internal service is used by the nodes in the cluster, while the external service is accessible outside of the cluster by external resources. Now that we understand this basic Kubernetes component, let's get to understand the architecture of Kubernetes. Kubernetes, or rather Kubernetes cluster, consists of some number of nodes. Of course, clustering is having two or more components or features joined together. In this case, we have some number of servers which can also be called nodes joined together. In Kubernetes, we have the master nodes, which is also called the control plane, and we also have the worker nodes, which is also called the compute node. The control plane or the master node controls the cluster, while the worker nodes are where your applications will be deployed in, basically. Therefore, the worker nodes will apparently have more resources than the control plane. And there must be at least two control planes and at least two worker nodes in the cluster for high availability sake. So let's talk about the services that must be present in these nodes. One of the services that must be present in Kubernetes cluster is the container runtime. Now we have different container runtime that is compatible with Kubernetes. We have the Docker, we have the CRIO, we have the container D. So this container runtime are compatible with Kubernetes. So for this architecture, the container runtime here is the Docker. And the container runtime is responsible, is basically responsible for running the container in the Kubernetes cluster. Another important service is the kubelet service. The kubelet service on each node interfaces with the container runtime and the node. And because the kubelet communicates with the API services on the master node, hence every configuration request that comes into the cluster, for example, to start a pod, the kubelet takes that configuration and starts the pod. And because the kubelet also interfaces with the node, it knows how to take resources from the node, for example, the CPU, the memory. It knows how to take those resources and assign the resources to every container pod that is started and running in the cluster. Another one is the kube proxy. The kube proxy is responsible for the network communication in the nodes and among the nodes. If there is a syscall, the kube proxy will be the one to forward the call from the Kubernetes service to the pod. Like I explained what Kubernetes service is, it allows when, when there is a request, it collects the request and then pushes it into the pod, right? So the kube proxy algorithm works in a way that when the request or call is made on a node, it forwards that call to the particular pod the call is for inside of the same node the call was made and by doing that it makes the request faster instead of going to another node to deliver the request since the replica of that pod is in the same node the call was made now because the control plane controls the kubernetes cluster and is the master there are other services that must run on the master nodes for Kubernetes cluster to function well. And one of the services that must run on the master node is the API server or API service. The API server is the door that allows requests into the cluster. So it's just like a door that allows you to communicate to the cluster, meaning that if you're going to interface with Kubernetes, you would have to go through the API server.
and to communicate with Kubernetes, you will make use of a client to tools. Yeah, so you can use tools such as the kubelet, which allows you to run commands like kubectl. You can also communicate with Kubernetes by using client tools such as the GUI or the, Kubernet or the Kubernetes API. Another important service that must be on the master node is the scheduler. When the API server authenticates you into the cluster, the scheduler takes over, plans and chooses the nodes to distribute the loads to. It's very smart and can schedule which node the next component, like pod for instance, will be created on, after which the kubelet takes over from the scheduler and creates and starts the component, like pod for instance. So, the scheduler just plans and distributes while the kubelet takes over to do the work. We can't have all these high tech activities going on in the cluster and there won't be a service responsible for all of these. This very important service is the controller manager. The controller manager takes care of the cluster operations such as it knows the changes happening in the cluster. For example, if a pod dies the controller manager signals the scheduler so that the pod can be rescheduled and created the controller manager is the service that is responsible to know what is happening to get the changes of what is happening in the cluster and make sure that everything works fine also it is imperative that all these high tech activities be stored and the service that is responsible for storing all the Kubernetes cluster logs is the etcd service. So the etcd service stores all the logs related to everything that has been happening on the cluster and it stores these logs in the YAML format. Having understood the Kubernetes architecture in the next lesson, we're going to see the step-by-step -step guide of how Kubernetes can be installed.